Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 45 of FTB Interactions, where I'm... Ah, now I'm another. I'm not supposed to get close to the place, spawner. Come on, Dyer, use your brain. Uh, where I'm down on the nether, killing some blazes. I got five to go. Five to go. Uh, I've been leveling up my, uh, blaze spawner thingy here. Uh, as you can see, I've got, uh, the, the advanced tier of the data model on the deep learner. I really gotta get some better armor sooner than later. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know what I wanna get. Play something cool. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Loving the bow. Can we talk about how much I love the bow? Because I really love the bow. It's super awesome. I literally one-shot most things that I've encountered thus far. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. As you can see, I'm one-shotting blazes left and right. The, the, the quick draw is awesome. Like, it just, boom. Boom. Hey, look at that. Superior data model. All right. That means it's time to slash home. Booyah. Uh, between episodes, did some minor stuff. Nothing too crazy. Uh, did a little bit of crafting. Uh, not a lot, really. Just a little bit. Uh, I made two more uh, Petro Petunias. Petro Petunia times two. So we could ramp up our mana production just a little bit, right? I'm not going to go crazy and spam the things, but I wanted to have enough mana going on because of how much fun we were having, right? Uh, the other thing we're going to probably want, let's see here. I made the, the blaze spawner, obviously, as you can see. So I should be able to pop this dude in here. So like, let's, let's do that. We'll take this dude out. We will take you out and pop you in there. There we go. Nice. Look at all the look at all the stuff we got from that. That is that is actually really pretty cool. I'm extremely excited about that. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to do with all this extra terrestrial matter stuff that we're collecting. Though note that it can be consumed for experience if we ever run into an experience situation. But remember, we're getting lots over here, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, now polymer clay was what again? I know we just made it like an episode or two back, but it's the poly, it's the, it's it's clay and eight enriched eggs, right? So if we got, if we got eight clay and a stack of eggs and we alloy smeltered you guys together, boom, easy peasy. That is extremely simple to craft and extremely OP, because we know deep mob learning is really, I mean, it's a, it's not like crazy OP, but it's OP enough that you're like, yeah, that was, that was, that's a lot of stuff that you get from that, right? So uh, the good news here is that now we are getting both hellish matter, which is a new type of matter for us, right, that we can use for kinds of cool stuff, like that living matter manipulator dude. Um, and among other things, we can centrifuge it to get some good stuff, right? So not only do we get hellish matter, but we also, pristine procurement was successful, because this guy's superior, so we have like almost a 25% chance of getting pristine matter. So that gets us lots of blaze powder, and we can also use it to get molten cores and blaze rods if we use unstable manner. And we can use it to get sparks, which is what we were kind of going for. Not to mention we can also use it to make the blazing orchid from plants. I don't know why that seems like an exciting thing to get. I guess it does something cool. I don't know. What's that do? I have no idea. I guess we'll find out. Um, and then, you know, the assembler here can also... Ooh, look at that. With Liquid Starlight. Neato burrito. All right, cool. So, like, just a little bit cheaper way of getting sparks, but gold ain't that expensive. So, that's what I worked on between episodes. Today's episode, let's figure out what we're going to do, and I will be back in just a minute. All right, guys. So, here's what I've done. I've kind of poked through all the, the chapters here to look at now that we're kind of entering into the medium voltage age, right? The MV age. Um, and we're not too far away from HV, to be honest with you, right? So medium voltage, we could get into oil, uh, you know, power gen, but I don't think we need to because we've got a pretty solid steam setup going right now. So I think my plan at a high level is as follows. I'd like to, um, we'll see if we have a problem with it, but we shouldn't. We should be able to, based on our current setup, um, maintain the MV age with steam generator, right? Then we'll break into the HV age and that's when we'll start all of our fuel processing and all that good stuff uh, to make sure that we've got enough fuel for HV age, right? So like we've already done some of the seed stuff, right? We've got crystallized oil. We've done some of this, so it's like not a big deal. 
um, and we know how to make it. So I don't know if we're going to automate it yet. What I think I will probably do is wait until we get to the HV age, and then we're going to focus on automating all this stuff, right? So we can do the, the mineral crystals. We can do the chicken if we want, right? We can get the, the mineral crystals cooking into, you know, the fluids that we need, all right? And that's what we use to, to make our crystallized canola seeds, right? So that'll be step one. Or we might just do the tree farm, right? We could do the tree farm or we can do the chicken. It doesn't matter, right? But we'll do one way or another. Um, we'll automate that and then we'll we'll immediately jump into empowered canola, which looks like it needs some starlight and some infinity dust, which we can get um, by doing liquid nightmares, right? Which we can get nine of those for 144 millibuckets. So it's like a really small amount. Um, and liquid nightmares, you can get in a night mail, night, a light well from grains of infinity or drops of evil, preferably grains of infinity, which we can automate by doing a mob farm. So we'll look into that as well in the future. Um, so that looks pretty cool. Automate infinity. Which chapter is this even? Uh, this is for all your chemistry needs. Oh, HV plus chemistry. Okay, cool. Good to know. There's a lot of chemistry stuff that I haven't really done anything with. Um, and maybe I've done some of it without noticing, uh, honestly. Like, there's there might be things. Like, I didn't do this, right, at all. Um, and then there's, like, all these other quests that I never really got into, right? Um, arboreal extractors and sulfuric naphtha. And naphtha, hydrogen and sulfuric naphtha will appear in this stuff is useful for better use. Um, cool, I get a creative modifier for using that, but I have no idea what that's all about. So I don't know anything about this chapter much, right? Like, it clearly some of this, against all odds, oil spawns in large. Yeah, I found the oil, so that's cool. Buckets, those are rookie numbers. Fluid pump, we made one of these. Okay, so we did kind of do some of this, and then these guys we've also made, so that's cool. Um, and then the crystallized oil, I think we've even got... Ta-da! So some of these quests, here's the thing, right? A lot of them require you to like check the box. So we kind of already did the quests. Ooh, I'll take some food, yes please. And I will definitely take some ender fluid conduits because those things are a little bit annoying to make. So some of these things we totally did, right? Like heavy fuel, light fuel, diesel fuel, right? I get it, um, that's all cool, right? Buckets, pump, and uh, these things we also did. So a lot of this stuff we probably already did without even realizing it. Rubber sheets, huh? I've made these. I know I've made these. I don't remember where. But that might knock the quest out. Hooray! Whoops, misclicked. So there's probably a handful of quests that I've done by virtue of the fact that, like, you know, I've already done it, and that's cool. I'll hang on to those. But I think my plan for today... What I'd like to do, I'll probably dip through the quest book here and just like figure out quests that I've actually already done, but just because of the, the virtue of the way it works, I didn't get them completed. So there's just a lot of quests, dude. There's Metallurgy, LB, and then there's like, you know, some other things that I haven't super been paying attention to. Chemistry and you. Okay, little Billy used to drink, but he doesn't drink no more for what he thought was H2O was H2SO4. Um, cool. That seems good. All right, I'll look through that stuff in a bit because I've already kind of planned out what my goals are. So what I think I want to do is, is clear out the MVH, right? I'm going to use this main progression tab here as just here's the reference for what we should do now that we're in the we're, we're in the medium voltage age. So recommended me to get a multi-smelter. That looks really cool in a super powerful way to smelt resources way faster than we're used to. Also an extruder. We know we've been wanting those because um, the extruder is how we get some of the, the things that we haven't easily been able to get thus far. Remember, there's a few recipes that we've like not had a, an easy way to get. So I think the MV extruder is totally going to be useful for that. I forget exactly what it does for me, but I believe it said that was like a better way to get rods or whatever. Um, so now that we've got that planned out, uh, we also want to get, uh, according to the quest book, we should look into making uh, the precision laser engraver at some point, used for crafting multiple parts of the circuit crafting chain. The LV variant wasn't worth making unless you want to automate chiseled sandstone. Right, so we're getting the advanced version of this guy, um, which is going to be involved in making like all these wafers and stuff. Remember that? Remember these guys? Yeah, good times. So we'll uh, definitely be looking into that kind of thing, um, and that should be cool. 
I kind of remember you. Because what we want to start doing is getting away from making these kind of circuits and making the better tier. Um, remember, in Greg Tech, there's multiple circuits in each tier. So, like, originally, um, now that we're in MV age, we can get into advanced circuit parts. So that looks cool. And then we can assemble them, I presume, into other things. That looks neat. Probably a bunch of things we can assemble them into, right? Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here, actually. They will probably be useful. Um, so in MV, we've been making these circuits, which are reasonably expensive resource-wise. These circuits are more difficult to craft, but are better resources. Um, in terms of resources, they're just cheaper, right? And we can get some more advanced tiers of this stuff as we progress. And you can see, like, it gets cheaper and cheaper, depending on which route we want to go. So, like... I think originally you would start with this one, but then eventually we can get into these dudes, which require an assembler and some polyethylene, which we have now, right? We we spent time getting that already. And then eventually we might want to get to this guy, which needs the, the SOC thing. So remember this? Yeah. And that doesn't look so bad. Um, you know, it's just water in this chip, which I think is what needs the precision laser engraver, right? Knockwood doped wafers. So I think that one might be a later, that's an HV tier thing, right? So basically there's cheaper versions of the recipes as we progress, right? And to make this one, by the way, needs IV tier. So we're not gonna be making this anytime soon, right? But this one we can make an MV and it's a cheaper process because look, like you get like 24 of these for like a couple ingredients. So way cheaper to make. Um, but we do definitely need that central processing unit, which needs a cutting saw from the CPU wafer, which is another precision doohickey. So there's a lot of things to automate here, and I want to do it all with logistics pipes. Like, um, here's what I'm thinking, right? Logistics pipes, at least I think they can, is pretty good at handling fluids, right? Like, we can have fluid crafting, right? So what we could do is we could teach the logistics system, hey, you get <clears throat> 144 millibuckets of molten tin for one tin ingot. And we could even go so far as to say keep X amount of molten tin inside the assembler at all times. So we can set up a whole automation system where it'll keep these things stocked with a small amount of liquids. Because remember in previous playthroughs and also when I was doing stuff over here, I basically said just keep like an unlimited amount of like the resources inside the reactor. And then we basically have like 64 buckets of rubber sitting inside the assembly machine wasted. So I don't want to do that this time. What I want to do is like automate it properly, if you will. So I think our first steps will be let's get a couple of the MV machines that we need to knock out this processing pattern, right? Um, what I'm definitely going to do is request one set of these because there's a quest for it. And then we're going to work towards the assembler, which will be able to do all these things. So we, in order to get this assembler, right, we need all these dudes, which needs an MV assembler. So we're going to totally need um, an MV assembler, right? And I think we've got that on our list of to-dos. Good. Um, part of me thinks I should consider automating some of these arms and stuff, right? But all that seems just like an awful lot of work. But I think I'm probably going to need to do it. Um, most of it's probably already relatively automated. But there's a few things in here, especially the extruder, which is going to make my life easier. Um, so we definitely want to get that MV extruder if we can sooner than later. So I think MV extruder should be one of the first things that we make. Um, so let's, you know, knock that out too real fast if we can. And uh, what I'll do is come back in a few minutes once I've done a little bit of the boring crafting stuff, and then I'll show you guys building the, the factory for this. Cool? So I'll be right back once I've done some crafting. But I wanted to give you guys that list of, like, here's my plan for the next couple episodes. Here's what we're going to work on to, to automate and do all the cool, fun stuff. All right, guys, we're back. So one thing I'm doing is I'm setting up my advanced extruder for a small gear. Uh, this is actually a pretty good one, right, because small gears are a bit of a hassle to make otherwise. They're not terrible, but it's way easier to just boom and boom it. And that does require MV. And large gears, as you guys have seen me in the past have to make, are usually pretty expensive resource-wise. Like a normal recipe requires eight of an ingot. With the extruder MV tier, it only requires four. So super efficient. Um, so I've got them, I've got two extruders I made. We're gonna add the large gear when we need it. And now I'm looking at how am I gonna set up this whole thing? Do I wanna make a big long line here, or how do I want to do this? Because, like, ideally, I would do something like this. And these guys are just mana steel cables, right? So I could probably get some 4x mana steel cables. Did I teach you 4x mana steel cables? I don't think I did, right? No. 
Um, but we did teach them normal 1x, so we can combine them manually if we want, right? So if we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, so that means 40, right, mana steel? So if we wanted that many, we need 20 mana steel ingots, which is 10 blue steel ingots, right? So we do this, we're missing two lapis dust, boo! Boo, missing two lapis dust. Where would lapis dust be? I know we've got some lapis ore, so I can probably just drop you in here. I think this is the easiest way to get lapis dust, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> never mind, I'm not missing lapis dust. We're good. <laughs> Crisis averted. Crisis averted. We ran into that problem in the past. I really should look at, um, I should really look at um, automating that a little bit better, right? And this is what I think I'm going to break into once we get deeper into the MV tier. I think what we'll do is we'll <clears throat> make sure that as we get into MV and HV, a lot of like the the requesting will happen up here and then down here is we'll have some of the automation stuff. So for example, I'm going to have like liquid tin available at all times and then we'll, we'll, um, We'll do something to automate that, right? Where where um, the the tin can be extracted from where it needs to be. Cool, alloy smelter is behaving. Good job, alloy smelter. Nice. And because I probably had a long enough period of AFK time between segments there, and wow, look at how hungry Dyer is. He is just eating all the food. There was definitely a little bit of AFK time hanging out in there. Um, and I never drank my chai tea. I should. So blue steel. Right, this guy should be pretty full now. Nice. That's what happens when you have to AFK in the middle of an episode? That's way. That's my process. It's my process. It's how it works. Right, and then we get 40 of you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually wind up. Boop. You come with me. Um, we're gonna put the Man of Steel dude here. Or yeah, and then you're gonna get your extruder like that. Right, so that we can, like we did here, we've got this line coming up. So let me get my logistics pipes components here. It's probably just easier to get them out of this chest. Yes, so I've got an unrouted and I've got some basics. Do I have basics laying around? I feel like I should. Um, and we'll use some of our logistics chassis mark fours that we have laying around in here. Uh, and we should have some crafting cards handy, right? Do we not have any basic logistics pipes? Eh, let's get like 10 of them. How's that sound? Auto crafting for the win. That's why we set all this up, right? So you're going to come up here, right? Oh, right. We'll hold off on that for a minute, right? But you'll basically come up here like everything else. And for now, I will start off with the basic logistics, the basic logistics chassis there. Right? And all the auto crafting should be behaving itself. Yeah, look at you cooking. Nice work, sir. Nice work indeed. Everybody's doing their job and routing all the items around. It's so fun to watch logistics pipes. Like, you know, there's something to be said. Like, I get applied energistics, super fast, super cool, super powerful. But, like, you lose something without that, like, seeing the items flow around a bit. Um, there's definitely something lost there, you know, and that's kind of a bummer kind of a bummer right so is everybody done being busy over here i want to be ready for the next item to flow through good job got her done so now you're no longer a problem you route properly you're happy and we can get um recipes in here so like we'll throw a crafting card in here because i know i need uh the small aluminum gear which is in this thing an aluminum ingot right so this is the kind of automation that i said we'll be doing on screen here and i think that's about it right so if i came over here and requested an aluminum gear just make sure he behaves himself and everything routes properly it should all oh, right he needs power <laughs> dire please uh, so you're showing up here with the last few Man of Steel cables, and I've been using the 4Xs, right? So here comes the very last one, just in time. So we do this, and we do that, and that's pretty cool. And I could easily add, um, and you can see I have in my inventory some crafting table things. I could easily add that. There we go. Beautiful. And you're extruding, 
And that's really useful. That's going to be like super cool for us to be able to make that automation happen. Because um, one of the other things I did real quick between episodes is add a few tables here for things like the MV robot arm and the MV piston. Now, to be fair, these things are made a little bit more efficiently. Um, so like right here, you can see the MV robot arm, right? It's made like that or it's just the disassembler. One of these guys is going to be more efficient. I think it might be this one, the electric motor, right? So that's. Four 2x, a couple coppers, aluminum and magnetic. And what about you and the assembler? That only two aluminum rods. And so that, it's also four copper though. So I'm gonna say that's like not more efficient. It's just a different way to make it, right? Effectively speaking, that is the exact same number of resources, right? So no reason to replicate that. How about you? Um, Cause you're two electric motors and a copper cable, same thing. And then 864, is that six? I feel like that's six rubber. So I don't think there's any reason to, to move these into the MV assemblers, because then we just have to do extra logic that we don't want to worry about, right? So if I came back here now and said to you, I would like an advanced assembly machine, sir, right? So I'm going to route you home. And I also tested my motor crafting and worked really well, by the way, right? And all that stuff should wind up in this chest, because that's what you do. There you are, MV electric motors, perfect. Um, let's say, can you make this? Four good electronic circuits, right? So we don't know how to make these yet. Um, you need four of them, huh? That's what I need. I need, I'm gonna have to replace these eventually with the other kind of circuit. But why don't I teach it for now how to make those? Because he mostly knows how to do that, right? I think he knows most of the components. And then eventually we'll replace this um with what we need right so where is this dude good electronic circuit so let's put you in here because for now so that we can do the auto craft we want that and then in the future we won't have to do it as much so now can you do mv assembly wow that's a lot of things you need paper and rubber sheets and oh my uh do we have more paper we do that's cool we have that so that's nice uh we're gonna definitely need more black carpet uh, what else do we need there? Coated circuit boards and rubber sheets. I'm gonna get some of this off camera. Um, I might need to automate this rubber sheets bit, but we'll we'll figure it out. Um, we'll come right back. These things fall into the category, I think, of something we don't want to automate yet. So we're gonna we may not need them anymore. So I'm just doing some of this manual. Oh boy, we requested it and it worked. Booyah! All right, cool. So lots of things on the hook here. Let's see if everything works the way it's supposed to. It should. In theory, there's just a lot of things. This is my big question. Are you going to behave? I hope so. Because you guys should be smart about this. It doesn't look like you're being that smart about it, but you should be. We'll find out if they become less smart. Hopefully they do. Because um, you, I thought you buffer until the thing's available, but maybe not. We're going to find out, like, really soon, right? That's what this guy does. He tells me that this guy's got this in it. Yeah, the crafting buffer upgrade. He should be, he might need a new version of the mod, to be honest with you, because I think logistics pipe's updated. I'm not sure, we'll find out. But yeah, that's a lot of crafting that just kicked off. There's a lot of things happening there. Oh well, we'll be done in a minute. You know what it is, it's all the it's all the circuits because we're doing the expensive circuit for now, but we need the we need the MV assembler to make the cheaper circuits, right? So that's what's, that's what's doing it. Cool. Somewhere along the way, logistics crafting tables became a much better craft. Wasn't this one before? I, I looked in, in this MV, in this LV assembler and I saw that like 18 logistics crafting tables sitting here. I'm like, when did I request those and why are they just sitting there? The, the, the crafting card was set to do one per set of ingredients. It's now eight. So yay for buffs. Thank you, pack maker. Ooh, I think we're good. Yes, advanced assembly. Nice, that is a quest. Completion, sir. Uh, and then you're gonna probably wind up with one of those dudes, a crafting manager, but for now we can start with the advanced logistics pipe and we'll expand as needed. Uh, so that's super awesome that we got that completed there. And that is also a quest completion, by the by. That gets me some wafers, sweet. And some food and some cobalt ingots. I think I can do something something tinkers because I have access to that stuff now, but not gonna sweat it. We'll play with it later. I appreciate the food though. That's always a welcome thing. Mm, pastry. So anyway, back to work. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? So that's the advanced assembling machine. Sweet. 
Um, so if we wanted to get the good electronic circuits, we have one of them, right? Like what if we wanted to instead, I'm gonna put you in there for now, instead get the integrated, right? So if we wanted to do this route, which is the, which is the better way to go, right? This is the better way to go. Um, we need these guys, which need an MV assembler with polyethylene in it at all times. I mean, it doesn't need to be in it at all times if we set up the fluid logistics to handle it, but we should make a polyethylene maker, right? Um, something that'll, you know, frequently make polyethylene for us. And we totally have that chicken now, so we can do it with ethanol. And that'll get us, you know, a decent amount of plastic enriched eggs and ethanol. That's a very simple way to make polyethylene. It's not as complex as a process as we no normally have, right? So maybe we should look into making polyethylene like an automated thing, because I think we need a lot of this, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we need a lot of this. So automating it would probably be key. We would probably want to have a chemical reactor set up um, with the, the, the chicken feeding eggs in directly like we're doing for the experience maker, right? So like literally just have a chicken sitting there with a hopper on top feeding the, the eggs in. It probably wouldn't be a hopper because they need 32 at a time, though we'll see how long it takes to craft and whether we need it to be a hopper or something else. But you get the point. Um, and then we need the ethanol, which we know is the advanced distillery, right, of biomass, right? And here's a tip. I found this in one of the pages. Here's a tip. Is it in here? Where is it? Is it MV? It's MV. Biomass. Best catalyst is Batania petals, but you can double check in JEI if you don't believe us. Botania petals, you say, he said with enthusiasm. So I did validate that. Um, and if we look at biomass, right, like right now we're doing wood, like saplings, which is already automated, right? And that gets us um, with water, uh, not a huge amount of things, but we get 300 biomass from mystical light blue petals, which is pretty cool. 500 if we use honey, but for, for water, um, water plus petal equals 300 biomass. So that's way better than we were getting with um, water and saplings, which is 100. So it's three times more efficient, but on the other hand, we already have saplings automated, right? Um, so that's a thing to consider. So we might wanna look at moving that inside here real quick. So I think one of our plans would be to take this basic brewery and like kind of get it set up so that we've got the brewery feeding into the distillery to make ethanol and then the ethanol feeding into a chemical reactor, right? That's also LV. We should make them all MV though, so that because the distillery has to be MV. So let's make an MV of all three of these and that would be kind of neat. And hopefully that won't be too much of a problem on our power demands, right? So we probably want an MV brewery, right? MV brewery. And that is what we will do to make our biomass. Cool. Um, and if it becomes too much of a hassle, we'll find out. It doesn't look too bad of a recipe though. Not too bad of a recipe, right? Not terrible. Yeah, no, it's totally doable. I don't know if I did pumps though. I don't think I did pumps. Pump is like, that's always the super hassle because you need the motors and the screws and the rings. Like all this stuff is such a hassle. So I definitely didn't teach it how to make pumps. Um, I think they're way easier though, once we get to automating it. So that looks a lot easier. We would just need to know how to make rubber rings, which is an extruder, right? Which we have MB tiers of. So rings won't be a problem. Uh, and these guys I think are also extruders. Um, so again, extruders is the answer to a lot of automation's problems. Like this is a hassle of a recipe, whereas this is like way easier just feed into a machine and let it process, right? I think that's doable. So MV extruder is definitely where it's at. So we definitely are gonna need rubber rings for a lot of things in the future, I suspect. So what I'm doing is getting myself an extruder shape ring. Hopefully you will let me, oh, there we go. We did craft it, cool, right? And then you're gonna go on the MV extruder line here, right? So we're gonna probably have a lot of MV extruders, but that's how we roll. Um, and then you'll go in here with a logistics chassis. Let's get the cheaper logistics one because I don't know how many of those ring shapes we're going to need at this tier especially. That's a crafting manager. Let's do the logistics chassis mark two because that ain't too bad. Right? And then I'm going to add you a uh, rubber ring as a crafting card in the extruder. It's four of these per rubber bar, 
right? And rubber bars we get from what? We can solidify them. Um, yeah. So there's probably going to be a few things that we'll need to automate, obviously, right? But it should all be good in the end. So we'll let that cook. That looks good. Um, I'm going to put you guys away. I'm sure I will have a need for them in a bit. So now if I want the advanced brewery, we need electric pumps. So let's see what we need to make in here. We need a lot of things. Bronze rotor, the hammer screwdriver, and we need bronze screws. All right, let me make these guys off camera. I need a couple pumps because we're going to need one for the chemical reactor. No, we don't. We only need one pump for now. Guess who's out of copper? It's your ability dyer. Wah, wah, wah. Not the end of the world, but we're going to have to do some stuffs. I'm, I'm feeling a between episode kind of thing coming on. Uh, where we're going to work towards getting more stuff and or things. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of mining, get some copper. What I might do next episode is come back and look at making more resources out of less resources. We'll see if that's a thing we can do. And once again, short on carpet. I should really get away from that carpet dependency and automate the parts for rubber uh, around stuff. Right? Because this carpet dependency, like, A, I could totally do industrial floor going. I think I have access to those machines at this point. So if we really wanted to keep using carpet that would be an option but my suspicion is like most cables and wires going forward are going to be rubber encased and even the ones that we're currently using on carpet now could be rubber encased so my thoughts are like let's not automate that because pretty soon we're no longer going to need that right um so yeah them's the plans all right so if i did that and brought you guys back actually you shouldn't even be in here you should be in here Organization is key, y'all. All right, so now you can make that. Cool. All right, so I'm making an extruder um, for for screws, right? Because screws require bolts, and bolts we can get directly from an extruder, right? So another extruder experiment. I told you extruders in the MV, like this is like the key to MV is making lots of extruders. So let me come back next episode. I will have this up and running. I will also uh, do some mining for some copper. And then maybe we'll look at that whole like ore extrapolating thing because like we could probably do that oh good that's a completed quest nice i should probably just put them in there so that you're ready to go um but there's a quest line around around ores isn't there where's that quest line around ores like, is this it? Yeah, native iron clusters and quadruple your ores with starlight transformation. All roads lead back to these clusters. I guess magic really is everywhere. Don't forget you can 64x plus your ores by macerating the clusters and utilizing standard Greg Tech processing as well. Additionally, these clusters can simply be smelted directly for their ore. Ho, 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 ho. So that requires iron ore clumps, which requires a lot of stuff, right? But dense iron ore is where we start. And we can get iron concentrated blood shards if we combine mana from wizardry, which we know how to get very easily, and life essence, which we've already got going in an MV chemical reactor with any dense iron ore, right? And remember, these guys are just um, either you can chemical bath them with liquid starlight to automate it, or you can do starlight transformation, both of which are available to us because we have that collector crystal. Right, so we can either say collector crystal it and automate it that way. Which I'm probably going to look at doing right, and then you do what? Um, you can either smelt into four native iron clusters. All right, so we take an iron ore, we turn it into dense iron ore, right, and then we can dense iron ore it into that, and that's four x, right, and then you pulverize into double, so that's eight x, right? So that's one iron ore becomes eight iron, not too shabby. Um, now, or we could Hellfire kill them. That's the same thing, right? So yeah, you smelt or Hellfire kill them, right? Or Arc Furnace it. If we did Arc Furnace with Blazing Pyrothean, we get Iron Crystals and a little bit of Phosphoric Acid. And these guys become eight native iron clusters. So that becomes 16 iron ore. Yeah, so we can get really ridiculous if we want. So maybe we'll look at doing that next episode. Um, just out of curiosity, right? You are how long? Three seconds for a very tiny amount of liquid starlight. Like a very tiny amount of liquid starlight. Um, that to me seems like your best option, right? Chemical bath it rather than waiting. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. 
we're probably gonna look bad. I got a chemical bath. He's got some mineral resin in him right now, but we can we can shuffle that around. So maybe we'll look at doing an ore production line as well. That'll automate that whole setup, right? Um, I th that could be cool, right? Maybe we'll look at doing that really soon. All right, still, there's so much fun stuff we get to set up and so much automation, but we got to wrap up sometime. So for now, Delta 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Like I said, a little bit of copper mining between episodes. And then what I'll do is save that copper to see if we can like four or eight exit. And that would be stinking cool. And then we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll automate it through this process, right? And we'll have some kind of, I don't know if I'll stick with my Steam ones because they're pretty slow without tick accelerating. Um, and we want to automate it. So we'll look at doing it as either an LV or an MV tier where we can just like do like a, you know, put ore in and it automatically processes, right? Like I'd put the copper ore in and it would do like the starlight thing and it would do the the uh, blood magic and then, and then do the pulverizing and then the hammering and then the smelting and then spit out, you know, a bunch of ingots. That would be a fun thing to build. All right, got to wrap up. Double 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.